Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be exploring a case presentation and looking into the disease profile for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So to start off with, let's think about what lymphoma actually is. And in simple terms, it's defined as a cancer affecting the lymphatic system. Now, primarily, this affects the lymph nodes, and any area or any lymph node in the body can be affected. However, typically, it affects the armpit, the neck, and the groin. And so these are important areas to examine when approaching a patient. It's also important to remember that there are a number of other organs affected um, in lymphoma and also play a part in the lymphatic system. These include the spleen, which is an important organ for the emergency supply of red blood cells and platelets and can be used by the body, for example, if the patient has severe bleeding. Additionally, another important organ to consider is the thymus, and this is a butterfly-shaped gland important for the maturation of T cells. Okay, so now let's start by categorizing lymphoma, as I find this is quite useful when it comes to thinking about what type of lymphoma a patient might have. And there are three ways, three main ways, that you might be able to um, categorize lymphoma. The first one, which you probably might be aware of, is Hodgkin's versus non-Hodgkin's. We can then also categorize them by the cell type affected. So is it a B cell lymphoma or a T cell lymphoma? And finally, we can categorize them depending on severity. So is it a high grade lymphoma or a low grade? And this might be important when it comes to treating a patient and choosing options for that. Okay, so now let's start by having a look at an example case. Okay, so if you'd like to read the following vignette and then answer the associated question. So here I have highlighted uh, the key details that I feel uh, are important to pick up on. So first of all, this is a young male who's complaining of a lump and he describes it as rubbery and non-tender. We're already thinking at this point that this is potentially uh, concerning. He's also had a fever that has been rising and falling, which is a very unusual or interesting presentation. And then we have this patient who's complaining of uh, quite a lot of weight loss, and he also has some night sweats. So we do some further investigation. And basic bloods show, uh, sorry, that should say hemoglobin, of 100, platelets 298, white cell 1.3, and an MCV of 93. And as you can see, I've highlighted the um, abnormal pathology here. So this patient has anemia, as you can see, and he also has a low white cell count. So we decide to do uh, more investigations and we do a biopsy of the lump to see what might be going on. And on biopsy, this is a histology slide showing these cells. Okay, so hopefully uh, by now you are thinking that this could potentially be, or is most likely, a diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now Hodgkin's lymphoma is a cancer that typically affects either the younger patients or the older patients. So in our example, this patient was 23 years old, and so he fits um, into the younger population age group. In either case, it's more common in males, and it's also noted to be associated with Epstein-Barr virus. Now, Epstein-Barr virus is an interesting virus that in itself may cause um, lymph lymphadenopathy and also hepatosplenomegaly. So it's an important differential in this case. Of course, it's also important to think about a family history um, and if this might be present in this patient. Now, when it comes to the symptoms of the cancer, uh, we can see that this patient had quite a lot of these. So first of all, he told us that he, well, or, or on examination, we found that this patient had painless rubbery lymphadenopathy. And this already raises red flags because typically benign things such as an infection might be painful 
or if it's something like a lipoma, this will be fluctuant in nature as opposed to rubbery. And so this is an important um, finding. Now, when it comes to Hodgkin's lymphoma, a key that typically can can you might see in, in exam situations is that the patient has a painful lymphadenopathy when they're drinking alcohol. So as highlighted in red, uh, this might be something that you see in an exam. Additionally, if the mediastinal lymph nodes are affected, then the patient may also have shortness of breath and coughing. And then we have something uh, which we term B symptoms. And again, this is something uh, seen in lymphomas. So it includes things like a fever over 38 degrees. If the patient has had weight loss of greater than 10% of their normal weight within six months, and also if they have night sweats. So again, these are red flags to think about. And of course, in this scenario, the patient did mention he's had a fever, but he said it's been rising and falling. And this is something known as a Pell-Epstein fever. And it's something that you might see in Hodgkin's lymphoma. The other time to think about when a patient might present with a fever that cyclically rises and falls is in the case of an abscess. Now, if the lymphoma is left long enough, it may also progress to um, the liver or the spleen, and it can cause organomegaly of those regions. Finally, because we have um, white cells that may not function properly, and we have a low white cell count, it can increase the risk of infections. And also, if the lymphoma potentially spreads to the bone marrow, which is, the, of course, the production factory of red blood cells, then it may reduce the haemoglobin and therefore cause anemia. So the patient may find that they are getting tired more easily, um, they may feel pale, um, and again, this can cause shortness of breath as well. So let's think about the different subtypes of lymphoma in the case of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And this might be important for um, treating a patient, for example. So the most common type of Hodgkin's lymphoma seen in the UK is nodular sclerosing. And again, in exam situations, typically they will, uh, they will tell you about this patient who has mediastinal lymphadenopathy. And so this is a key word to think about when it comes to the exams. Another type is mixed cellularity. Then we have lymphocyte predominant and lymphocyte depleted. Now earlier I mentioned that it was important to subtype a patient's lymphoma because it may tell you how to treat them. And this is very true um, because it depends on the prognosis. So lymphocyte predominant lymphoma has the best prognosis, whereas lymphocyte depleted has the worst prognosis. And nodular sclerosing and mixed cellularity both considered to have a good prognosis. So it's not the best, but at the same time, it's not the worst. And now when it comes to investigations of Hodgkin's lymphoma, again, as we, want, as we did uh, in the case, you want to start off by doing basic blood tests assessing for um, the levels of white cells if the patient is anemic um, and then you also want to do a baseline kidney and liver function test and this is important for two main reasons. First of all if they are deranged it may uh, suggest that the patient has um, metastatic disease and secondly because this is a lymphoma the patient will likely require chemotherapy and other medication and of course you want to assess the baseline to see if their kidneys or their liver will be able to handle those medications. Additionally you may want to carry out a blood film and this will show you a leucoerythroblastic film. So as you can imagine in Hodgkin's lymphoma we have white cells that are not adequately working and the body is trying to replace those and therefore the factory in this case the bone marrow is working overtime and the, the same case here is with the anemia so it's, it's there are there isn't enough red blood cells and so it's producing it's trying to produce a lot of red blood cells as well and so we have these red blood cells that are not formed properly and they may contain a nuclei and hence they're termed leucoerythroblastic film. 
Now you may also want to carry out a chest x-ray to investigate further with regards to the mediastinal lymphadenopathy because there is a number of reasons that a patient may have mediastinal lymphadenopathy such as TB or sarcoidosis and so you may want to examine the patient's chest to see if there's any uh, lung involvement. We also want to do a biopsy and this is important because Hodgkin's lymphoma has a certain type of cell seen under the microscope which you saw on the previous slide uh, which is called a Reed Sternberg cell. And so if these are present, then it suggests that the diagnosis is Hodgkin's lymphoma. We can also do a, a biopsy of the bone marrow um, to see how that process is working as well. Now you also want to consider doing a CT or imaging tests. So first of all, typically you will consider doing CT thorax, abdomen and pelvis to look for any metastasis. If metastasis is seen, then it will be staged using a PET-CT. And this brings me on to the next point, which is the Ann Arbor staging. Now, this is a staging system used for both Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And again, it will help to guide treatment and explain uh, to the doctor and the patient how severe the, the patient's um, lymphoma is. So if we start off with stage one, this is when the lymphoma is on a single site on one side of the diaphragm. And here you can see that the red line is illustrating the diaphragm. Stage two is more severe. So you have two or more sites, but they are still on the same side of the diaphragm. Stage three is where the disease is starting to spread on alternate sides of the diaphragm. And this could be one lymph node, it could be five lymph nodes. Uh, but the point is that they are on both sides of the diaphragm. And then finally, for stage four, which is the worst prognosis, we have metastatic disease. So now it's spreading outside the lymphatic system into organs such as the uh, liver and also the bones might also be affected. Okay, so now let's think about the Hodgkin's lymphoma and how it might be treated. So... The key principles to treating Hodgkin's lymphoma is chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And typically the regime used for Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, in the UK is ABVD. So this includes doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastine and docarbazine. Radiotherapy can again be used as an adjunct. And of course, it's, it's important to think about supportive care as well. So if the patient has a fever, they will need to be given antipyretics. Um, if they're vomiting, antiemetics. Um, if they have an infection, then of course, that needs treatment with antibiotics. So that's everything for today. Um, thank you for watching the video and feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, it would massively help us if you could like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.